Hey guys, welcome back. Time to do one of the dirtiest, messiest jobs of auto detailing, and that is cleaning the wheels. Today I want to introduce to you a few new products and a few new tools. The goal is efficiency, effectiveness, and safety. Now if you're a driveway detailer, or an enthusiast, or a car owner, it's one thing. But if you do this as a profession, efficiency is key meaning time truly is money. And for that very reason, you will see this massive arsenal of different types of brushes that I've chosen, that I've sourced out in order to find truly the most effective, the most efficient, and the safest tool for cleaning the wheel itself. Now when it comes to cleaning a wheel, I dissect the wheel, not including the tire or the wheel well, but the wheel into four parts. We've got the face of the wheel, we've got the lug nuts, we've got the barrel, the inside of the wheel, and then we have the brake caliper itself. Every wheel is gonna be different. My guess is that you have likely tried many types of wheel cleaners, as have I. There's this endless debate between acid versus non-acid wheel cleaners. That's only part of the debate. One of the greater parts of the debate is the amount of wheel cleaner that you're gonna go through just to enjoy clean wheels. Now, this is a foreign car. It's a BMW M4. Foreign cars are notorious for slinging lots of brake dust. Everything has trade-offs. One of my iconic idioms is trade-offs. Everything has them. Hence, the endless tools that I've sourced out in order to find truly that winning balance of trade-offs between the pros and the cons, the features, the benefits, the costs, endless list of things to consider in finding the right tool, the right product. So a product I want to introduce to you today is a product by Simple Green. Now check this out. Let me read you why I have chosen this particular product. Biodegradable formula non-abrasive, concentrated, VOC compliant. In case you don't know what VOC stands for, it's volatile organic compounds, which doesn't mean that much to a whole lot of people. What that has to do with basically harmful things that will be dispersed or are contained within this chemical. Non-caustic, non-flammable, rinses residue free. Now to me, that is a winning and healthy lineup of features and benefits. The reason I chose this specifically is that over the years, I used to use acid-based wheel cleaners. Now, in my wisdom, this thing called aging, you develop a certain thing called, hopefully, wisdom. I want to destroy my body, my lungs, my health, the environment as little as possible. I cannot do that with an acid-based wheel cleaner. If I did use an acid-based wheel cleaner that would be damaging to both my health and the environment, never mind the endless debate about whether it's going to damage your wheels or not, I would have to lay down a mat to contain the runoff and then suck that runoff up and then dispose of it properly. That is a lot of extra hassle. Wheel cleaners can get costly. You will consume a disturbing amount of wheel cleaner just to clean your wheels. And once again, it depends upon how you clean your wheels, the type of wheels you have, as in the design of them. For example, as a detailer, I require a wheel to be thoroughly cleaned all the way through. Not just the face, but the wheel barrel itself, as well as the caliper. There's nothing, well, that's an over-dramatization, but there's very few things that I love more than looking at my own car or a car that I freshly detailed, looking at the wheels, looking inside, and seeing perfectly clean and detailed wheel barrels. In order to do that, it's gonna require you to find that winning tool. Every wheel is unique, intricate, patterns, complex facets, faces, angles. This wheel in particular is one of the more difficult wheels that I've had to deal with. The good news is that it's a clear coated wheel, which unless you have a matte finish or a chrome finish on your wheel, virtually every original equipment, OEM, wheel will be clear coated. 
They'll paint it different colors of silver, but it's going to be clear coated. That's the good news. Why? Because clear coat at a base level is a form of plastic. These containers, which is why acid base wheel cleaners are not going to damage your clear coated wheels. You'll notice that that acid base wheel cleaner will come in a plastic container. People hear the word acid and they go into freak out mode. I get it. My big goal in, in today's episode is a couple things. One, how to be safer. Here I have a biodegradable cleaner. It's an all purpose cleaner. It's also concentrate. Now I can custom dilute it based on my needs. That makes me more economical. So this one gallon of concentrate can make anywhere from, well, if you used it straight, that would be a gallon, obviously, but it can be diluted up to 60 parts. That means for whatever one of these parts, whatever size that is, you mix it with 60 equal parts of water. For today's episode and these wheels, this is the very first time I'm using this cleaner. I've demonstrated other simple green products in the past. I've always been a fan of them, especially when you consider that they are environmentally friendly and biodegradable. It's not going to hurt me, not going to hurt the environment, not going to hurt my wheel. Also, I have this cool little thing called a pump sprayer. Typically, this is reserved for filling with chemicals to use around the house, whether it's weed killers, it could be bleach, many uses that people use this for. This is one more way that I'm going to become efficient. Efficient is also have to do with saving time. Time is money because I will be using disturbing amounts of this chemical to clean my wheels as thoroughly and perfectly as I want them. I'm going to be going through a lot of wheel cleaner. This is cool because I can fill it. I can pressurize it and I can spray it. I do not wear my hand out with a traditional trigger sprayer. It makes me more effective. It makes me more efficient. Efficiency, effectiveness, safety. What I would like to start out doing first before I get into this endless array of tools is to mix up my chemical. Many of my long-term followers, they will often write in and say, Darren, what is the exact dilution ratio that you use? I can't think of a single product where the dilution ratio is going to make or break your world. For example, I'm not measuring this out. I'm trying to dilute it 15 to one, which means one part concentrate to 15 parts water. Now, based on how much liquid I have in there, and if I fill this up to the fill line, I would say that's actually going to be a stronger concentrate than 1 to 15. But don't overthink that part. It's not going to make or break your world. This time around, I'm going to use regular tap water. I prefer a trigger sprayer. One of the tricks I will use is I will pinch off the hose right here. That way I can control the stream both at the trigger and the volume of water as I pinch off this nozzle. Now, if I shoot the water onto the side of the container, it's going to foam up far less. Virtually any product that you try to mix with water under pressure, as in from a nozzle, you're going to get a lot of foam. I'm not after foam. I'm after a liquid concentrate. So I'm shooting it towards the side of the container so as to foam it up less rather than more. Now remember to release that nozzle before you release this or you're going to make a big mess all over the place. And once again, trade-offs. Everything has them. This is a plastic container. It's got a plastic shaft for pumping, which isn't necessarily a problem. I used to be able to find a pump sprayer that used to have a metal nozzle. And the reason that's an element is because when you really are cranking in the pressure, this starts to bend, 
and my worry is that it might break. Push it down, you can lock it. Here we have the wand. This assembles very easily. Once again, trade-offs. I prefer a wand where I can detach this extension and just attach the actual nozzle right at the tip so I have a little more control right at the hand. The good thing about a wand is that I can reach inside here and I can spray the inside of the wheelbarrow. So that's the cool thing about a wand. Once again, trade-offs. Before I get into the actual wheel cleaning part, let's bore ourselves silly with the endless choices that I have come up with most of which I've had to go outside of my own industry. I find it very interesting that this industry of auto detailing is forever coming up with new products, new packaging, new labels, new colors, new terminology of products to sell you. But yet, they really miss the mark when it comes to actual tools. Therefore, Darren, yes, I'm referring to myself in the third person, has had to go out endlessly and find tools outside of the industry. Let me introduce you to this vast array of tools. Okay, so from left to right, these set of bottle brushes are what I use for both the wheels and the calipers and sometimes, based on the wheel, the wheelbarrows themselves. Just as a heads up, all the tools that I finally decided upon, you can find on my website. The link will be attached to the show more box or the description box below this video. So some of these tools come in pairs. For example, these two vent brushes are identical. These two are identical. These look identical, except for the color of handles, but they're not. They're all from different manufacturers, just as this one is. This one you probably recognize as Speedmaster wheel brush. This is one I fabricated years ago before I found the vent brushes. This is what's called a radiator brush. So this is for cleaning specifically for me inside the wheelbarrows. Once again, you gotta find that winning combination. This tool is effective. There's two problems to it. it. Has to do with the length of the bristles. Now, while that seems that it would be very effective as a wheel cleaning brush, the problem is, is whenever you pull it out of the wheel as you're cleaning it, so you pull it out and those long bristles will flip up the dirt right into your face, onto your clothes, onto the car, that becomes a problem. Also because of the thickness of the bristles, it is hard to get this in the very tight tolerances, like for example on this M4, between the brake caliper and the wheel itself. Let me show you what I mean. You see inside there, we've got the wheel itself and then we got the brake caliper. If I got a clean inside there, that's a pretty tight tolerance. Now as a rule, which really is a rule, I don't know if I've ever seen an exception, the rotors, which is the round metal part that the caliper pinches against to stop your car, the rotor on the rear will be smaller than the rotor on the front. Most of the stopping power is done by the front wheels. Hence, you have bigger brake rotors and bigger brake calipers on the front versus the rear. So on this rear wheel, there's more tolerance in between, a bigger gap in between the brake caliper and the wheel barrel itself. Less of a problem. Now this M4, it's not overly tight. There's actually some decent clearance, but you get in some to the true exotics and luxury cars and it becomes a massive problem. So you try to fit this brush into that tight area, it's not gonna happen. It is for this reason that I have sourced, I don't know, seven different types of vent brushes. 
What these are originally designed for is dryers. Your dryers will accumulate excess lint. They have these little vents and the goal is to shove them down so you can clean out the lint and make your dryer more efficient. These are ideal for wheels because they're thin. I can shove them in between the tight tolerance between the rotor and the brake caliper. I'm sorry. I can shove them in between those tight tolerances between the wheelbarrow and the brake caliper. But once again, they're not all created equal. This one has a lot of bristles. It's very soft. It's got a durable shaft. So this is one of my winning combinations. Um, I don't remember who makes this, but this one you will be able to find on my website. It also has a rubber grommet right on the tip because it has a metal shaft. That metal will not come in contact with the wheel because of the endless bristles. But this little tip, it needs to be covered with rubber in order to prevent you from gouging your wheel. So this, in many ways, is an ideal brush. It is made by a company called Way Clean. Way cool. Then we've got this bristled brush. It's got less bristles. You can actually see the metal shaft through it. It does have a metal uh, tip on the end, which is good. It's got decent length. It's got decent support. And why you might need decent support is, is you're rubbing and scrubbing the inside of the wheelbarrow. You are going to want to put some pressure so that this, so that the bristles are against the wheelbarrow itself. So if it's too flexible, then it becomes awkward to use, especially at distances like this, where you have an exceptionally wide wheel. These came in a pair, they came together. This one, the bristles are a winning balance between not too stiff, not too soft. They're gonna be effective without being damaging. Once again, we've got the rubber tip on this one. This is another ideal brush. This is another good one. The bristles are a little more firm on this one. Got the rubber tip, nice length, uh, flexible, but still durable enough. Here's another one. These bristles are even stiffer, and you'll notice that the diameter of these bristles are much less than these bristles. So this is where you're gonna have to pick that winning combination for you. My winning combination for my wheels, and by my wheels I mean on this car in particular, are these two brushes. This has a lot more bristles. It's soft, but there's so many bristles, and it's a tighter diameter. So between these two, I haven't decided which one I like the best, but I've narrowed it down to the two that I prefer for this particular car, which honestly, for virtually every car that I do, these two have been the winning uh, combination for the past, I don't know, six months. Now that we've just exhausted ourselves talking about the wheelbarrow, I've ditched this one, by the way, completely. I don't use it anymore. Also, what's cool about these shorter bristle ones is when you pull out the bristles, you have far less slinging back into your face. That's a good thing. Now I know someone out there is gonna complain about the fact that we're 25 minutes into this and I still haven't touched the wheel. Well, it's how hard is cleaning a wheel, right? You spray on some wheel cleaner, you agitate it, you hose it off, you blow it off, you're done, right? Well, if only everything could be that simple. So let's discuss these bottle brushes. Now here is a very famous in the industry called a wheel woolly brush. These come in different sizes, different lengths, different diameters. The reason I do not like these is because of the very bristles, for lack of a better word, this material. It's very um, thick. It's more like carpeting. The problem with this is it becomes overly saturated. These fibers are very porous, so they will hold that liquid, which you may think is a good thing until you try using it. And then you'll find that it's not so favorable. Also, because of how thick this is, like carpeting, it will only wedge into tight places so much. That's why you need these bristles that are thinner and more collapsible because they will, they will be able to collapse and you'll be able to get them into tighter places. Now, the bottle brush is ideal for most wheels also. It can be your go-to brush for many reasons. One, most of you will not have overly deep wheel 
or wide wheels in which to clean. Most of these bottle brushes are actually long enough to reach in there. You might chew up your knuckles a little bit because you're going in deep to actually clean the wheel barrels themselves. And the shaft is thin enough where most of them will be able to get in between the caliper and the wheel barrel. Not all of them, but once again, just like these brushes, these all come in different configurations from very stiff bristles and less amount of bristles to a wider shaft. These are softer bristles, kind of the medium as far as density, as far as bristles. These, you'll see that the density of the bristles are even smaller. So they're, they're tighter, they're more confined, and they're stiffer. Something else to look forward, something else to observe, is the fact of bristles that come out the tip. For example, this brush has less bristles that come directly out of the tip. They're shorter. Why is that a problem? Because when you try to clean the surface head on, suddenly you're touching the plastic of the shaft itself. I want the bristles to be effective and to do the cleaning. So something like this, where it really holds the bristles or where it really holds the shaft away from the material and you're using bristles to do the cleaning becomes a good thing. So once again, it's all about that winning combination. For me, this brush itself is a winning combination. The shaft is a little thick than I prefer, but I use these specifically for the intricacies of the wheel itself and the brake caliper. I don't try to use this for the wheel barrel itself, but it's a case by case based on your wheel. Once again, you can find this on my website. So I can just show you, these are just all the different versions that I've tested and tried out to find that winning balance. Next, we have these brushes that are for the wheel face itself. Once again, the wheel face, is a different part of the animal of the wheel. I prefer the boar's head brush. It's got a plastic handle. It's not gonna damage your wheel if you get crazy and ding it against your wheel. These bristles, they soften up as they get wet. That's a good thing. This one has synthetic bristles. They're stiffer. So once again, based on your specific wheel, we'll determine which brush is the winning combination for you. This brush is my wheel lug brush. It, it's tight, it's made out of boar's hair, so it will soften up as it gets wet, which is generally a good thing. And I use this for the inside of the wheel lug nuts itself. This is my tire sidewall brush. It's got stiff bristles, it's got a handle, it's convenient, it's heavy duty, uh, it's HDX, which I get at Home Depot. I can put my hand in here for ultimate control or put my hand here to keep my hand away from the actual sidewall itself. And then I have complete cleaning of my wheel and tire sidewall. With that said, let's get down to the messy work with the water and the new simple green that I'd like to demonstrate and see how effective it is on cleaning these wheels. First off, my simple rule is you always read the manufacturer's directions. Because this is an all-purpose cleaner, there's not going to be directions specific to cleaning the wheels on your car. But nonetheless, still read the cautions, the directions, the dilution ratios. I've already diluted this. I've already pumped it up. This tip, you can adjust the fan pattern from a stream to more of a fan. Not a huge fan, but a little fan. So as a rule, Darren's rule is that I start with the inside of the wheel barrels first. Once again, you will consume disturbing amounts of cleaner in cleaning your wheels because they're so dirty, they're so intricate. So let me demonstrate this wheel brush. And I just go through each spoke and I'm focusing on the wheel barrel itself. One of the things you want to be able to do is you got to manage your working environment. It's a cool cloudy day. It's not overly hot. The wheel is cool. It's not even warm. So I don't have to worry about the product, the simple green, 
accelerating or drying or flash drying. I always work on a cool to warm wheel. That is the rule and most directions will say that. So let's switch to this brush, which is my other favorite brush. Get in here. Reaches to the far back of the wheelbarrow. I can use my second hand to kind of control it. I'm not getting a lot of sling, if any at all, shot back into my face. Now something I need to add is that I clean these wheels at least once a week. I do not allow the brake dust to accumulate for months on end before I clean the wheels. So you have to manage your own expectations. Let me grab this brush. Now it's got all these different spoke patterns to it. And it's got these tight crevices here which make cleaning a little more difficult. But this brush is seems to be very ideal at cleaning these. Once again, as a professional, you got to speed does count. Efficiency, you've got to be efficient at being effective. Efficiency is more about the way in which you go about it. Effectiveness is more about the end results. So I want end results that are acceptable, but I want to do it in a way that's more efficient, as in saving time and effort. So you can see these wheels have a lot of intricate patterns to them. I switch to my, and once again, got to manage my liquid. I want to keep it active. And you can start to see just how much wheel cleaner you're going to start going through in order to get clean wheels. This also has an additional groove down here, an additional lip. So this is where I'll just use my fingers to agitate behind those spokes as they connect to the outer edge of that wheel. Seems to be the quickest way for me. Now at this point I should have a pretty clean wheel. Time to rinse. This is where I like that trigger nozzle because I can adjust the spray pattern right at the tip. One of the things that makes wheels so difficult is that it's round, which means as I'm looking at normal viewing um, positioning, I'm only seeing down there, I'm not seeing up there. So in order to double check, I gotta get up underneath here and check, and I can see that I did not rinse very thoroughly up underneath there. Also, it's got this tight little lip here that collects brake dust. So I'm going to reactivate it, and that's where I'm gonna to switch to one of these wheel brushes, and I'm going to use it to scrub the face, and there's not much of a face on this wheel. Very few flat edges to it, but there is a little lip here, and then also these tight little areas, I need bristles that are longer that can really reach down in there and get those tight little crevasses because once again, I'm looking for perfection. I do the rinse. Now, I want to address the brake caliper itself. And by the way, for you uh, keyboard jockeys, this area, I've already policed it. There's not a bunch of gravel laying around. Cement is different than asphalt. Asphalt will tend to break apart. It'll leave chunks on the street. Cement is different. You can hose off your area. It can be nice and clean. These are synthetic bristles. They're not going to grab any rock or debris from my area but I've already cleaned my working area and make sure it's suitable. Now that I'm cleaning the brake rotor, I'm going to grab one of my brushes here and the brake, I'm sorry, the brake caliper. That's the thing that pinches on the brake rotor to get your car to stop. It has a lot of angles and nuances to it. You can hear this metal, or I'm sorry, you can hear this plastic shaft bang against the wheel 
but it's plastic. It's not doing any damage to it. So I'm getting this nice, cool, powder-coated uh, M class or M series logo, all detailed out. Now I'm going to check inside here where the lug nuts are. I want to make sure that is like literally clean, clean, virtually clean. You've got these little tiny holes here. These are, these are painted black inside, so it doesn't really show the brake dust. I'm pretty certain they're clean anyways, but to make sure, I'm gonna go back in and specifically attack those with my really long boar's hair bristles. Rinse again. And I think at this point I have success. Let's go in and take a look. We've got the M series brake caliper. We've got clean inside the wheel barrel. Hopefully this is focusing where you can actually see up inside there. So we have success. The only thing to do at this point will be the wheel wells, the sidewall, the tire. Now that the wheel is clean, and once again, I like to spray the chemical directly on a dry wheel so that the chemical can react to the brake dust rather than hosing off as much brake dust first, then spraying the chemical. That's a decision you're gonna have to figure out. It will also be based on the chemical that you're using. So I'm gonna spray this because it's an all-purpose type of cleaner degreaser. I can spray it in the wheel wells and on the tire sidewall. I'm gonna scrub the tire sidewall. I'm gonna get those bristles right in that groove because there's a little bit of overhang on these performance tires. These are Pilot Super Sports made by Michelin. I can also use this bottle brush to get inside here uh, because there's not a whole lot of gap between the tire and the fender. So traditional wheel well brushes may not work. This, once again, will work just fine. You'll get a lot of dirt here that you're not gonna get on a wheel. Of course, you can clean this off for next time before you use it on your wheel if you want to keep a single brush. Often I will keep dedicated brushes, a dedicated brush for the caliper, the wheel barrel. So I will have a few dedicated brushes specifically for the tire and the wheel well. The wheel well will get different type of dirt than the wheel itself will. Now because of the way I detail cars, I like to keep a clean microfiber cloth so that I can mop up very gently. And once again, you'll have to pick the order that you go into. Some people prefer to wash the car itself, deal with the wheels at the end. I prefer to do it in opposite um, method because most cars I work on are not excessively dirty on the paint. My car specifically, the paint never is dirty. So I prefer to do it this way, get the dirty work done first, manage the overspray like that, make sure this is done to completion, then work to the uh, rest of the car. At this point, I'm gonna use my leaf blower, my electric leaf blower. I prefer this because all I need is electricity. Now they do make cordless leaf blowers that are battery powered. I have not found those to be strong enough to my liking, so I'm always using electricity, so it's a non-issue because as a rule, I'm already gonna have a cord out. So now I'm gonna blow the wheel and what I'm trying to do is eliminate 99% of that water. So let's blow this wheel, and then I'm gonna show you another trick after that. So now that this is blown off, no matter how much you agitate, rinse, whatever chemical you're using, when I say perfection, I really mean perfection. So at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna grab one of my brushes that I use for the wheelbarrows, 
and I want to take a microfiber cloth, wrap it around, I drape it over the tip so that as I push, it stays in place. Now when I pull it out, it's going to want to peel back, so I simply hold it like this. So I do this. And despite me going over this wheelbarrow multiple times, you will see that there is in fact some dirt coming off on the microfiber cloth. So this will accomplish two things. One, it will completely dry the inside of that wheelbarrow and it will accumulate any residual dirt that was not gotten completely the first go around. Yes, I know it touches the ground, but once again, this is where you've got to manage your world, apply caution, some uncommon sense. At this point, I'm gonna take the same cloth, I'm gonna go through the spokes because it's wet. There's still a little dampness to the wheel. And so it will naturally uh, get the microfiber a little bit wet and it will release any remaining dirt on the wheel spokes themselves. True perfection. And you can see how much work goes into just cleaning a single wheel times that by four. And you can see why most guys give up or most guys are not going to uh, take a wheel to complete perfection in order to do it. I'm going to wipe that little lip right where the lip and the wheel itself meet. I'm going to double check the wheel well lips at this point because I want those clean like the rest of the car. Now I think I have perfection and I'm good to go. As a little FYI, the rotor is bare metal. It's iron. It's going to rust regardless of the type of wheel cleaner you use. Do not become overly concerned with that. The moment you drive your car and you tap the brakes, the caliper, the brake pads are gonna pinch against that rotor and it's gonna shave that perfectly clean. So it's a non-issue. It's impossible to clean a wheel with any liquid without that rusting. And in case you still can't wrap your mind around it, think about when you're driving your car in the rain. Rain is made of water. Your wheels are gonna get wet with water. Your rotors are going to rust. So after it rains, do this. Park your car like you normally would. Come back out the next morning and see if your rotors don't have some form of rust on it. It's just natural, it's gonna happen. Don't worry about it, don't overthink it. At this point, now that we have completion, I'm gonna apply my favorite dressing, CSI New Tire Lotion. It's not an overly glossy, shiny dressing. It's a water-based formulation. The reason I like water-based is because I want to be able to clean off this dirty layer before I reapply a new application of new dressing. I'm also using another tool that I found outside the industry. This is what's called a grout sponge. You will be able to find this at my website. And once again, the link is always gonna be below every one of these videos that will take you to my website. I get this wet every time, I wring it out, I always spray the tire sponge itself because I don't want overspray going to my car. I want to manage the product. This is cool, it comes, actually it's called a turtleback grout sponge. I cut it in half, now I've got this big surface here of which to use, but I have this tight little corner in which to get this little lip. So it's very versatile, it's very handy, and to me, it outperforms any other tire dressing applicator I have tried, and I have tried, as you can see, many, many tools when it comes to detailing, because it's all about efficiency, effectiveness, and being safe. What you need to remember is when it comes to tires and dressing, is that the tire sidewall and the material specifically in which the rubber is made will determine how your dressing performs. That is as big of a factor as the dressing that you choose. So this tire lotion is not meant to be overly glossy, but because of this tire itself, it's a performance tire, it's a quality tire, it's quality rubber. So this dressing shines up perfectly for this particular tire. 
but you may have a cheaper tire. It may not perform as well, just as any dressing may not perform as well. And in that situation, if you're looking for a true gloss, you may have to go to a solvent-based or a highly silicone-based super gloss tire dressing in order to create some shine. In this case, in most cases I don't. You can also find this at my website. We're done. Now I just have to rinse and repeat three other wheels and tires, and then I'm good to go. In conclusion, guys, in 200,000 words or less, this is how Darren cleans a tire and a wheel and how he sources his proper, most effective, efficient tool. With that said, is Simple Green. First time I've used it, I've tried other of their products. Obviously, according to my eyes, hopefully it showed up on camera, I think I found my new winning, my new favorite wheel cleaner. The disclaimer is this, if you have a wheel that has two, three, four years of accumulated brake dust, do not have unrealistic expectations for any wheel cleaner. I don't care if you get the most aggressive acid-based wheel cleaner. You're almost going to have to break out a hammer and chisel to get off that kind of brake dust. Brake dust eventually will cause permanent damage. One of the reasons I'm a fan of keeping it off. I don't like it sitting around. Never mind, I don't like the unsightly appearance of it sitting around. So for me, this represents the winning balance. It's a concentrate, I can dilute it way down. You saw how much chemical I had to use. It's not gonna break the bank. It's not gonna break my health. It's not gonna break the environment's health. So I'm in love with it. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. Yeah. You will be able to find all these tools, all these chemicals on my website. And by the way, if you like what you're seeing, by all means, mouse over the thumbs up, give it a thumbs up. By all means, leave me a comment. I'm doing my best to improve and to, well, let's just keep it at that. I'm doing my best to improve. By all means, subscribe also. And if you want to get the alerts for whenever I upload a video, when you hit the subscribe button, also hit the little bell icon, and that will make sure that you get the alerts every time I upload a new video. Till next time, we'll see you in the next video.